Hey everyone, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com. In today's episode of The Automation Show, we're going to take a look at how to create a simple program for an S7-1200. Now, if you've been following our previous episodes, you know that the great folks over at Siemens sent us in an S7-1200 and HMI starter pack to use on the show and for the blog, and we really appreciate that. And so I thought I would take a moment here to learn how to write my first program for Siemens. Now, I've been using Rock Automation, Alan Bradley, since 1990, so 29 years. So um, it was very interesting doing my first programming, and it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And so if there's any Siemens experts out there and you have tips or tricks that I miss while I'm doing this, please let me know over at theautomationblog.com. But uh, for any of you Alan Bradley folks out there who want to see how the other side lives, um, I think you'll find this pretty interesting. So let's take a look at the demo. I ripped out one of my uh, MicroLogics and put the Siemens into this demo. And uh, I wired in the stop and the start into inputs 0 and 1. I also wired in the red and green LEDs into 0 and 1. And then my relay here is, that's what I'm using for my motor starter, right? So I got this relay here. The coil is wired into output number 5. And the contacts are wired into input number 5 to simulate like the auxiliary contacts on a motor starter. Okay, so that's our base unit here. I downloaded a blank program to it. It's in the program mode. It's not in the run mode. Um, and uh, we're ready to go over to the computer and see if we can figure out how to program this guy. All right, so let me start by opening up uh, TIA portal. I'm in version 15.1, I believe, yes. And uh, here, I'm just going to do project, new project. And we'll call this my project01, create. And now it's creating the project for me. And the first step here, I'm going to go to add new device. And I'm going to add my Siemens S7-1200. I have a 1212C that came in the starter pack. It's the ACDC relay. So we'll choose that one there. That's the latest version. And click on OK. OK, here we are. Now the first thing I'm going to do, so I don't forget, is I'm going to sign the uh, Ethernet address here. So let me click on the Profinet port. And you can see down here, I'm just going to put in 1.112. That's the address I've chosen on my subnet for this device. And uh, let's see, what's next? Next thing I want to do is I'm going to select the base unit here and put in some I.O. tags. And we're not going to put a lot of thought into this. We're going to keep it very simple. So the first uh, input here, input 0, is going to be my stop PB. And the second input, input 1, is my start PB. Okay, and then input number 5, we'll just call this our M1 um, aux contact. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the outputs. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. So the first output will be my stopped pilot light. My second output will be a running pilot light. And last but not least, I have my M1 motor there at output number five. Okay, pretty easy so far, right? So let's go ahead and uh, bring this down a little bit here. We'll go over to program blocks and we'll open up our main OB1 program block. Okay, we'll select the first rung here. So I'm going to have stop, start, motor, but I also need a branch. So I want to insert a branch around uh, my start button because I'm using a momentary start button. And I will put in uh, another contact there for the auxiliary and I'll close that branch. Excellent. So let me put in stop here. This is my stop PB. I'll put in my start PB here. I'll put in my M1 motor here, and I'll put the auxiliary contacts here. All right. Now, on my second rung, what I want to do is put the uh, code for the uh, LEDs. So basically, I want the green LED to come on when the auxiliaries are on, and the red LED to come on when the auxiliaries are off. So let's go ahead and put that in there. We'll, uh, let's see, we'll add a... M1 aux here. Let's see, the auxiliary contacts are on, 
So we want to turn on the running pilot light. And I'm also going to branch around that with turning off the stopped pilot light. Okay, so if this is on, I'll get running. If this is off, I'll get stopped. All right, so far so good. Let's go ahead and save our project. Let's go ahead and download our project. Okay, let's start a search for our controller. Okay, it looks like it found it, but I'm gonna flash the LEDs just to make sure here. See it flash over here in a moment. Yep, that's the right one. Okay, so let's select it and let's go ahead and download to it. Okay, I'm gonna continue without synchronization. I have a blank program in there. Okay, I'm gonna download it. Okay, I'm gonna leave it in um, no action. So I don't want it to start after I'm done downloading. Okay, so now let's go online. Good, let's monitor our routine here. Okay, let's go ahead and put the controller into the run mode right here. Do you really want to go into run mode? Yes, I do. Okay, and what do we hear? We heard one of the relays close and that's for the stopped pilot. And we can see over there, on the unit, that red light is on. So if I push in my stop button, I should not be able to start the system. Yep, okay, working as expected. Let me release my stop button, press my start button, and look, I have my green pilot light, my relay is on, you can see the auxiliary contact sealing in my start button, keeping everything on. And if I hit stop, See, I dropped it out again. And so that is how easy it is to create a program for an S7-1200. And I gotta be honest with you, having used Allen Bradley for 29 years, it really felt like it was fairly easy. I mean, there's a lot of terminology differences between Allen Bradley and Siemens, but it was uh, actually pretty easy to uh, program this uh, Siemens controller, having known the Allen Bradley. Now I know I probably Went about this the long way. I'm sure some Siemens experts out there can tell me a bunch of shortcuts, and I appreciate you uh, sending those to me over at theautomationblog.com. You can comment right on this uh, video there. But with that, that's the end of this episode. Now, I'm a beginner with Siemens, so I can't teach a course on Siemens, not, not anytime soon. But if you're a Siemens expert and you'd like to teach a course on Siemens, at theautomationschool.com, I want to invite you to contact me. I've been upgrading the website to allow third-party um, instructors to post their own courses. And so it's still in its early stages, but I really would like to uh, invite anybody out there who would like to, I mean, it could be on Siemens, it could be on Modicon, it could be on anything um, that you think other people would like to learn about, you know, feel free to contact me over at theautomationschool.com. And if you know anybody who needs Alan Bradley PLC training, please send them to theautomationschool.com. That's how I pay the bills and keep the lights on by teaching training courses over there at the Automation School. So with that, that's the end of this episode. Thank you for watching. And until next time, peace.